Sup, powerful nonsenses. Hello. I think I need to change change it up. I'm always saying sup. Go on in, say something else. Uh, good morning slash afternoon slash evening, powerful nonsenses. Right. It's not, it doesn't quite flow as well, does it? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> Especially like to open the episode with yeah. a bit of um... Good morning slash evening slash afternoon. Good morning, Vietnam. Powerful nonsenses. We're here. We are here for another episode. Straight in your ear holes and eye holes. Your eyes have holes, right? E- yes. Right, that. That is, that is correct. Would you call that a pupil? How, <laughs> How is your GCSE in biology? Rubbish. <laughs> I can't say I'm surprised. <laughs> Something's hitting the back of my brain. It goes through somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm so glad you decided a career people in science like, was what you needed. People are like, switch off now. This guy has no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> Well, we are not a science podcast, so... No, that is true. We are really, not a science podcast. Yes, there's probably other and ones. for very good reason, as you can probably tell. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's a hole, right? Your eyes have holes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going there. Not going there. Anyway, so we should probably introduce ourselves. Yes. I am Wayne Ingram. I am Jem Yordis. And we are the Powerful Nonsense. Crew Dem. Crew Dem. Up- upgrading. <laughs> upgrading this week with the Crew Dem. <laughs> Man, I'm so not urban. <laughs> um, we could get you. What's the uh, the bandana or a what's the a bling chain? Bling chain, yeah. That's what I want. Or we can get you like a little pimp chalice. A what? A pimp chalice. You get like you know some of the old the gangsters in the rap videos have like a, a cup which is like diamond encrusted or a stick. I, I get the pimp stick. You can get the pimp stick. The chalice you got to check it I've out. Never, I've never encountered a, a pimp chalice. See, that is how. <laughs> Not pimp I am. Sort yourself out, Wayne. <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing. It is a thing. Okay, well, anyway. <laughs> so, we're not here to talk about pimps, or chalices, or sticks. <laughs> or eye holes. Or eye holes. <laughs> we should probably get going. Uh, so, this is episode 127. Yes, it is. So, show notes and things will be at powerfulnonsense.com forward slash 127. And we're talking about why you should ready aim. No, ready fire aim. I knew I was going to mess that up. up. That's going to happen so many times during this. Ready, fire, aim. Not ready, aim, fire. Ready, fire, aim. Basically taking action fast. Yeah. Before the doubt creeps in. Mm -hmm. And not suffering from perfection paralysis and all that sort of stuff. Procrastination. Procrastination. Yeah, 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 yeah. All All the excuses come dripping in. All the haters be hating. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I think I had too much smoothie. I think, I think well, I don't think it's the smoothie so much as the coffee. So you you put yourself in. I got to tell he's put himself in to win ten free coffees at Costa. Oh yeah, <laughs> and I I can see how if you win how that's going to play out. Number sixty seven. If it comes through, you're gonna ten, line it all up. Ten espresso. It's gonna shots. be like I'm gonna pretend I'm back in NBs and then straw pedo and americano <laughs> at the end. <laughs> All the shots, followed by a straw peanut and americano. I think I'll be buzzing. I'm, <laughs> you're, already, I'm already you're, buzzing. I'm twitching. Off I'm one americano twitching. and a smoothie. Yeah, and right? I had a small one this morning. <laughs> and a coffee. Oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. anyway. So, um, okay. So, let's just open with a general... General... Gist. Gist. So, uh, quite often... And I suffered from this when I set up my theatre company, definitely. Uh, quite often, you can be very like caught up in making sure that everything that you produce and all of your business and all of your side hustle and all of that stuff, anything really in life, is perfect before you kind of fire the trigger, pull the trigger. Yes. Pull the trigger. Um, brap, brap. <laughs> <laughs> sticking with that urban theme, brap, brap. <laughs> Where's my pimp chalice? <laughs> um, <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> this episode has fallen apart it's brilliant um yeah so and, and and so quite often we end up actually just not doing anything or making the money from the art. or make right or making the money which actually if you've got the money you can make it better yeah so it's better to make the money than it is yeah. to and i wasn't quite going to open with this quite so soon let's but do it. let's do it anyway so you've recently set up a new New business. Food business, yes. I never thought, ha- I never thought it would happen, but it has. And it was a pretty quick turnaround. Sorry, I'm just thinking about the conversation we had about when I called, when I was like, you're a kebab place, and you're like... It's not a kebab place. It's a vegan donor. <laughs> <laughs> just because I'm Turkish. I said my biology, my biology naturally sends me to make kebabs. I'm still offended that after all these, all these years of me saying, please 
open up a burger place because his burgers are amazing. Open up a burger place and you're like, yeah, maybe. I'm come. still offended that you've opened up a kebab shop before you've opened up a burger place. <laughs> Is this like the, the teaser for the Maybe, but the then that would place. mean going back to the meat option. So you never know. Yeah. But basically, to just quickly round up, I've started a uh, vegan donor food stall in Shoreditch. We kicked it off literally this week, Monday last week. Is it? It's Monday again now. <laughs> it's been such a quick week. It's been crazy. So we opened on Monday last week. We've been open seven days. And literally, we came up with the idea about three weeks before that. Mm-hmm. And so Wayne thought it'd be a good idea, and me too, that we'd actually put an episode out there on why... Although it was a rapid turnaround and it's rapid. literally just shot off and it's actually done really well last week. Why it's sometimes important just to literally jump in feet first and then figure it out as you go. It's mm-hmm. kind of that idea about the parachute, build it on the way down, which is usually not the way I do things. It's certainly not the way I'd jump out of a plane either, to be honest. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, uh, I'll no. make my parachute as I go. Yeah, so it was kind of that way of thinking of actually... Because I was always inclined to like, let's hold off opening, but my partner who I'm dealing with, he's very much, let's do it, let's get cracking. And I think actually, I've not done things like that in the past, but actually I think it's quite beneficial sometimes to just jump in. Mm-hmm. Because I do think once you've committed to something and you've got a date you're opening, I think it kind of forces you yeah. to kind of get the pieces in, in in line before you open. And I think sometimes, that's what, what you was mentioning earlier, I think a lot of the time we get stuck with this whole idea of Googling every single detail having everything perfect, everything in place, Mm -hmm. everything sorted, that it ends up taking six months to a year or two years. Even people were coming up to the store saying, so how? when did you think about this? How long have you been doing it for? And they thought we'd... Because the whole story was we had the idea when I was in Turkey only like a month ago, and then we'd turn it around in less than a month. Yeah, he came back. I was like, we need to record some episodes. He's like, I can't, I'm in Germany. I'm like, what are you in Germany for? Uh, Opening up a vegan donor place. I was like, what, in Germany? No, no, no. Just doing some research. So and that was a scarily quick turnaround. It was scarily quick. But it's worked out well. Last week was really good. Things are looking up. We're doing long days. Hired some staff as quick as possible. But it was just, I think it's really good to see that actually. I do think that deadline and just saying to yourself like... Mm, deadline is everything. With us as well, it was kind of like in order to test the idea, we needed to kind of get the customers ASAP. We wanted to know, okay, if this is going to work, how quickly can we test it to know to get feedback as fast as possible? Mm-hmm. And I think that's the problem. If you hold off from actually starting a lot of the time you don't get that feedback of whether this thing's going to be a success or not till you've opened or till you can actually take a sale. And sometimes if that takes you a year to get your website done or to get yeah. the brand in and you're pissing about with business cards, a lot of the time <laughs> you're literally missing out on actually the number one thing is will somebody buy it? Yeah. And so we obviously got a pretty hot spot in Shoreditch, which we knew. A football. great spot. Yeah, like exactly. I, I was surprised when I went there. I was like, Jim, you got a good spot. Yeah. I thought you had like a shitty spot. <laughs> but literally, because we were on that high street, we've got so much footfall coming past that we can actually test that idea rapidly. And I mean, mm-hmm. ours is a food store, but then if you've got a website, is there any way that you can pay for ads just to send traffic, to send people over there and see, can you get sales? Which means actually, if I can do it with adverts, then maybe I can start building up organic traffic through blog posts and stuff like that, or putting it on, putting your, I don't know, your jewellery on Etsy or something, get it out on a platform. You don't have to have mm-hmm. all the stock already made, yeah. but just put the photos up, put your T-shirts designs up. You can just put them in Photoshop. I think it's so important for anybody starting out is like get that sale. Yeah. Like you call it like, inst- like validate the idea before you take it further. Mm-hmm. I mean, for us, we had to invest in a lot of equipment, which is obviously not ideal if you're trying to validate someone because right. something because now you have to put the cost down. But in our minds, it was like, well, if we have the equipment and it doesn't work, we can sell it next week. Yeah. Which you can do with certain equipment and stuff like that. So yeah, it's a bit of a crazy one, but it's definitely been an eye-opening one as well. And I think another thing that we found is just having such naivety to what we're actually yeah. starting in some ways is a blessing mm-hmm. because I think a lot of the time if you know everything about it and you know how much grunt work it's got to take. I mean, I did a 14-hour shift yesterday that's crazy and we need to get staff in. But if I knew that was going to be the case, if I knew it was going to be work that hard, would I have had the same energy getting everything ready the week mm-hmm. before? Would I have been thinking, oh, God, my life's going to be screwed for the next couple of months if I'm going to have to do this? Mm-hmm. So I think a level of naivety actually helped in terms of yeah. getting something started. Yeah, because you're not so much worried about the consequences as just kind of like, well, let's just see what happens mm-hmm. kind of thing. Um, okay, so I think deadlines are definitely important. I just mm-hmm. want to touch back on that because i mean i've got my production company in the last couple of years we've worked on we've been in development with two projects 
One of them didn't have a specific deadline. One of them did. The one that didn't have a specific deadline hasn't happened. <laughs> the one that did have a specific deadline has happened and is happening again. Yeah. Um, and I kind of felt in the development of the one that didn't happen, I was kind of like, well, when are we doing this show? Like, because I need to know when it's happening because mm-hmm. I've just got a feeling it's just not going to happen. I mean, admittedly, the one that hasn't happened hasn't ha- hasn't not happened just because there was no deadline because another opportunity came by. But because we hadn't thrown all of our chips down, mm-hmm. it was kind of like, okay, well, we can actually push that to the side now because this is a better opportunity. Um, so I think deadline is definitely important. As well, because a lot of the time people might not have a deadline as in, oh, I need to open up the store on this date, so I know that's my deadline. Because a lot of the time if you are doing like an online business or you're making things or you're trying to, or you're freelance, something like that, there is no specific deadline to be open but i think somehow you have to find a way to build accountability to somebody based on what you want to start doing because Mm -hmm. it is so easy if there's nobody there to say you know what nobody tells you a website has to be up on a certain day nobody tells you any of that stuff so you have to find a way to be held accountable in some way so maybe if you are doing some you are freelance you do some free work initially yeah and that person gives you a deadline which means shit i have to become freelance at that moment absolutely and then, yeah, I just I do believe that when you have that that deadline, you're accountable. The brain switches on and says, "Okay, let's I get, have to yeah, do this let's now. figure things out." Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, I've said to many people, I always work on deadline. If you don't give me a deadline, it ain't happening. Mm-hmm. I've always said that to people. Like, mm-hmm. give me some specifics. Don't be like, oh, maybe in a week or two. I'm like, no, no. Mm-hmm. I want a day. I want a time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Another big problem as well, I think, why people get stuck in this kind of procrastination cycle or bloody becoming, trying to become an expert before you actually start, I think mm-hmm. is fear. And I think yeah. a lot of the time you are just searching for that excuse for why you to can't do, do it. it. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with you. There have been so many times where even in myself and I've been looking for work and stuff and I'm kind of like... Uh, no, I can't do that job because this, 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 and this, rather than just diving in. And when I, like, check myself on it, I'm always like, well, I know that's just because of fear. That's not even because I can't actually do it. It's because of fear. I don't want to be put in the position where somebody's going to tell me I can't do it. I'd rather be the one to go, no, no, Wayne, you can't do it, rather than have somebody be like, you can't do that, Wayne. Yeah, and I think that's a lot of the time it is a mindset thing. In your head, you don't believe you can do it. Mm -hmm. And so you're looking for the justification in any kind of detail. Oh, well, I can't do that because I need that certificate. I can't do that because... I'm probably going to need more money or the web. I don't know how to make websites so, and I can't find a web developer and I can't. And so you're going to search out your own mind's belief where sometimes mm-hmm. you just jump in and it's happening and you've got the deadline. Uh-huh. Your brain's like, you bastard. <laughs> you basically put me on blast and now I'm going to have to figure this out for you. Yeah. And it will go to work. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so there was another thing that you said. Oh, no, it was a question I had for you mm-hmm. um, just before we go to a break. Um, so you've set up this... Business in three weeks, yeah. which is doing very well. Well done. Thank you. Um, and what has been? What was from the from the being the really really quick, like just get it out there and go. What was like the biggest like challenge of that specifically? Not necessarily the challenge of the business, but the challenge of moving so fast. <laughs> and it's kind of going to be like a, a a kind of flip on the other side, and it is the idea of not realizing how many details there were right okay yeah yeah (laughs) so i think as you go when you say yes you get all the basics and you think okay i need the website and then you're done and then after you realize inside of that there is loads more aspects of things that need to be done but i think because of the deadline you do those little things quickly but i think initially it's overlooking every little detail we'd go shopping to bowl like cutlery and bits and pieces get back and be like how do we forget this 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 this, this?" (laughs) it's like me on my weekly show or not knowing how much stock to get or not knowing all these different things and i think for me it was that kind of probably being massively naive to what we actually required how much time commitment we would need to put into it Mm -hmm. But I think these are things that then you, you force yourself to kind of test your current assumptions and then you've learned and you grow and then the system gets better. It's kind of like the anti-fragility, um, fuck up a lot and then mm-hmm. get better because you fucked up. So it's kind of like you constantly do something wrong, which means, okay, next time we order more flour, you do something wrong, oh, we shouldn't do it this way. Let's buy a machine that cuts veg. And it's kind of that, it's kind of it forces you to keep growing before this and eventually, hopefully the system is so much smoother now mm-hmm. so that the details can actually come later. Right. 
But the thing is, I thought, shit, I didn't know we had to do all these things as well. Uh-huh. But that was a blessing in disguise because maybe if I knew all those, maybe wouldn't I wouldn't have started and maybe it would have taken a couple more months to even get going. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So we shall uh, take a break mm-hmm. and uh, we shall be back in just a moment. So we thought we'd just take a few seconds just to say thank you to our sponsor, yep. the University of Northampton. Huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Um, so why should you check them out? Well, first of all, we're we alumni. There. We yes. went there. So everything that we kind of deliver to you kind of comes from them in a way. Um, but also, they're not just about getting a degree. The thing we love about Northampton Uni from experience is the fact that you come out of your course with your degree, but also there's so many options on the table. They understand that it's not just about going out and getting a job anymore. It's also about the possibility of setting up your own business and becoming an entrepreneur. And to top that off, <laughs> It's not just about setting up a business, it's about setting up a social enterprise. That's their specialist area. So if you're thinking of setting up a business, it can also be one that's doing good to the world and delivering social impact. So check them out, northampton.ac.uk. And huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Welcome back. Hello. Uh, So. Yes. We're talking about ready, fire, aim. I got it right at the time. Um, Get cracking on your project. Why you should need to go for it. I don't know what that was about, but just sounds exciting. I can't. There you go. Yeah, that. Why well, mm-hmm. should do that? Um, <laughs> but yeah, so um, we were talking about finding excuses before mm-hmm. we went to the break, um, and you wanted to kind of riff on that a little bit, didn't you? Yeah, I think um, a lot of the time as well. Like with this project, I started so quickly. Mm-hmm. that obviously you didn't give me a chance to look for excuses but I think what made it possible was that like I was, you even said to me when I told you I was starting this you were like Jem it's very unlikely to go into this type of business or to do something like this it's totally out of what you mm-hmm. usually go for but, but for me well I think I had a little less naivety about the amount of workload you were going to have yeah which probably. I kind of tried to tell you <laughs> but you were like no I'll be fine that was like, my naivety yeah which in. was good because it's a good job you've done it because it's doing really well yeah um, but yeah. yeah. Sorry, carry on. What was I saying initially before you uh, I said that it was unlike you. Oh, yeah. And so basically for me, yeah, it was very unlike me initially. And the thing that made me kind of carry on with it is just it felt so right. Like, I think things were just coming together mm-hmm. because it felt right. And so for me, I didn't find it as a challenge because I'm into health, I'm into fitness, I'm into good food. And so for me, it wasn't something that I felt was going to be like bad in any way I felt energized because it connected with my values whereas I think a lot of the time when people hold off from actually starting something especially in starting business or entrepreneurship I think a lot of the time people are doing it for the wrong reasons yeah massively and I think in some I don't know where you could say woo-woo subconscious level right actually all that procrastination all that kind of searching for the excuses is maybe underneath it, you really don't actually want to do it. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes you're looking for the out because inside you know it's not the right thing, but because you're so attached to the outcome or what you expect the outcome to be, you're going to try to pursue it anyway. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of people get tied into that. It's kind of like if you are in your day job but you want to become a freelancer, but you know you've got certain skills, it sounds fun. And you'd be, oh, yeah, I'll be a freelancer, but actually maybe you just don't like the thing you currently do in your job, right? which is why you shouldn't make that into your freelance gig. Maybe right. you train and do something else. And I think, yeah, I do generally think on a gut, instinct, subconscious, whatever you want to call it, level, if you are questioning something so much and you're holding off from starting for so long, you have to, I don't know what the line is, but you have to decide, is it fear? Mm-hmm. Or do I really generally just not want this and I've become too tied to the outcomes of that thing? Right. Have I told myself a story of what will happen if I do this mm-hmm. as opposed to actually, you know what, I'm scared, uh-huh. but I just love the idea of it. And sometimes that fear, people say go towards the fear, sometimes the fear is the thing you need because that means you do want it. You just right. can have a bit of fear rather yeah. than... And I think that comes probably with just like while you're doing it, questioning like what do you think by doing this thing what is the outcome? And if, it, if you go straight to, you know what, it's money. Whereas for me with this project, it was, you know what, I would like people to eat a bit less meat. I want people to be healthy. I want people to be energetic. I want people to be happy, cruelty-free, whatever else you want to talk about with the product. Like for me, it connects with all my values. The money's secondary. Whereas I think a lot of the time, if you're doing a project or thinking about starting a project, if your answer for why you want to start goes straight to money, like it's a beeline to money, I think there's where you're going to find a problem. Yeah. I'd agree with you there. And I think 
because I think a lot of the time as well, I think that perfection paralysis comes from being too attached to the outcome. Mm -hmm. And if that outcome is the money, you're what the perfection paralysis is kind of doing is going, well, if this, if this isn't perfect, it's going to go wrong, which means I'm going to lose the money. Yeah. And so you're then attached to what you've put into it as well as what you're going to get out. Uh And it's that kind of thing of like, am I in too deep? Whereas I think if it's just a kind of like, just go with it and see what happens kind of thing. And it's kind of like that being comfortable with the potential failure of it and the uncertainty of it. And, um, it was something, a phrase I heard the other day, which was something like uh, being in love with uncertainty or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I think if you can kind of make peace with that, I think you are going to end up moving things forward a much more significant pace because it's just like, well, let's just see what happens, see what happens, see what happens. And, and then you, you could end up with something amazingly good because you're just iterating as opposed to just kind of going, well, it didn't work, so I'm going to get out whilst I still can. Mm-hmm. I think, think. It's, a, it's a wonderful position to be in when... You're doing something that you love, but there is complete uncertainty because I do generally believe that's where so much growth occurs. Like for me, even I said to you, like this is such a different business to doing a freelance gig where I'm the bloody, I'm the main person, I get the work done. Whereas this is actually thinking about hiring staff, this is serving people, there's so much more regulations around things, rents and all these things that I didn't ever think about. So for me, that uncertainty of what's going to happen next, I know by me doing this, if it flops after a couple of months, what I've learned, what I've taken away from it is going mm-hmm. to be incredible. And so it's kind of like, yeah, why not? I think people need to get comfortable with those challenges and just pushing yourself out there. Even like we're saying of people holding back because they afraid to get the sale. Like I think sometimes you're holding back because you're scared. You've got, you're scared about money. Yeah. You're scared to take money off people. You don't value yourself enough. So you, you're worried about what people um, might say if you provide a service. I said that in the talk we did at um, New Media Europe about this whole yeah. idea that people charge based on their insecurities, not the value they bring. And I think a lot of the time there's so much psychology behind why people are afraid to ask and put their hand down and say, um, yeah, I want to be paid for this service. Definitely. Whereas if that's where your fear is, then you have to just try and get used to taking money off people. I think a lot of it as well is because it's kind of like we're kind of brought up to like, no, you earn your money. <laughs> you have to earn it. Through like physical graph. Well, not or... even so much that, but you you have to earn it. You you can't be like, oh, I want. And it, it, it's almost like a, a taboo to be asking for the money. Mm-hmm. And it's and kind of whereas with something like this you kind of go I've come up with something it's great you want it give me money mm-hmm. <laughs> as opposed to it being like oh well it, I, like I think as it applies to this is it's kind of like well I've got this idea but I don't know if it's good enough to ask people for the money for it so I need to make it better to make sure that it's worth the money that I'm asking for and so as you say it then comes from an insecurity because then you're going well actually is what I've produced any good and yeah you're going to have that kind of aspect to it even if you kind of do just fire first aim later um but it's much less your ego's out the equation Mm -hmm. in a way i think that's what a lot of it comes down to a lot of the starting is is the ego i guess the ego sets kind of like the story around it which is kind of what's going to hold you back but i Mm -hmm. think there's so many there's so many angles you can approach this for for why you don't start something and i don't know it's probably not going to be it could be money for some person it could be the story, the the lifestyle they think they're going to get out of it. it yeah. could just be. I don't know what it might be. You've got a question out for yourself. But for me, I always am pulled and drawn to things that I feel connect with who I believe I am, which is my own self-construct. Like, no, everybody creates their own persona of themselves. Mm-hmm. But for me, it brings me joy. I am excited by it. And I think that's when you've got that, you cannot not do something if, yeah. it, if it appeals to you. You just, it feels like natural to say yes and I do think sometimes, a lot of the time, if you're very young and you've got like low responsibilities, saying yes to many things is going to just, at least you're going to learn. You can fuck uh-huh. up. You can keep messing up as much as you want. And you've got to be taken in directions that you're not expecting as well. Yeah. And sometimes that can be a real blessing. So long as you're still intentional of where you ultimately want to be and kind of the lifestyle that you want to have around that going, like harkening back to our previous episode. Um, but so long as you're still intentional about what you want like you can be taken along this brilliant journey that you're not expecting and never would have expected Mm -hmm. i think that kind of applies to so many aspects of life as well it's just like just go for it see what happens yeah i think i don't want to keep hitting the nail on the head anymore i just generally think with this episode it is just 
just start and go for it, but really have to question if you're not doing it, if you're holding back, why? Yeah. Because that's the number one question. There is something that's blocking you. It's a psychological block. It could be, I don't know, something in there is stopping you from starting mm-hmm. too quickly. And which is why I think sometimes having a partner on anything is always amazing. Luckily, Definitely. <laughs> my partner is a bit of a bulldozer, so he gets stuff done. He's super proactive, whereas I'm sometimes a little bit more detail oriented, which is funny to say because it's a different role between me and you. Mm-hmm. And there's a different kind of connection you have with people. But I think sometimes working together with different, collaborating with different mindsets, you yeah. just get cracking. And then maybe you become the accountability to each other. Yeah. Which definitely. is something we spoke about earlier. Yeah. So I think, I think that's, that's a good it. place to wrap yeah, up. I don't think there's anything more to say yeah. on that subject. You can kind of only keep hitting the nail on the head, I suppose. I wanted to use a different <laughs> phrase, but you, you kind of <laughs> use the right one. Run out of metaphors Yeah, today. run out of metaphors. Uh, so we'll wrap up there. So yes. thanks very much for tuning in. If you are on iTunes or the podcast app, please subscribe if you haven't already and leave a review, five stars or more. Greatly appreciated. Um, if you're on YouTube, hit subscribe and give the thumbs up some love. Um, and show notes as well are at powerfulnonsense.com forward slash 127. Hi. So thanks very much, guys, and we'll catch you next time. See you later.